Hello. Um, so I'm here in Does Liverpool today, and I figured I'd record some uh, video of of today's project. So uh, I'm doing a bit of work with Western Approaches. They're um, based down in the central Liverpool. They're the uh, where the Atlantic um, kind of naval campaign was run from the Second World War. And they've got all sorts of awesome stuff down there. Uh, one of the things they've got a load of is. Uh, these sorts of things, which is a teleprinter. Um, and so they've uh, kindly lent us one and we're gonna see if we can get it cleaned up and uh, and working. So yeah, like we don't really know anything about it. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna record some, some little, yeah, little videos, uh, hopefully at kind of interesting points when we, when we do stuff. I mean, mostly um, it has, like, you know, the power would come in and that would spin this motor. Um, and that, as you can see, kind of makes an assortment of things kind of spin around. These are like electromechanical devices. So there's very little, there's like one capacitor and two resistors or something in the entire thing. Uh, mostly it's kind of these little, you know, levers and gear wheels and cams and stuff and and the uh, keyboard kind of has all these little levers that you know come in, we'll get into that a bit when i dismantle stuff and there's a you know big electromagnet that's going to do making a lever go side to side when this data's coming in um so yeah we'll uh, we'll see what we find um but the first step i think is you know clearing up decades worth of dust from it so that it's you know going to operate a bit more smoothly when we're uh, when we when we fire it up so quick update um, we have taken this section off of the main teleprinter um, so this is the transmitter unit um, and and then this is the receiver unit I mean it's all driven by the motor um, which drives it through like as the motor spins around you can see this bit at the front it's kind of rotating and that passes the drive through to this there's like a thing at the back there and I can spin that around and you can see that that is what kind of drives all of the transmitter section because of course with this being a teleprinter it's not a typewriter so you know yes you can press these keys and have it print out on that bit of paper but mostly what you want is to press these keys and have it transmit to the um, you know um, another teleprinter in some other office. So like this one was often yeah connected to computers in not computers it wasn't connected to any computers at all. It was the Second World War. Um, <laughs> it was connected to teleprinters down in Bletchley Park because they were often talking to each other to do things. So uh, so yeah, we pulled this. I mean, this comes off. There were like two screws that held this entire section onto the rest of the uh, teleprinter. And then each of these keys, um, there's like this locking bar at the back and this locking bar would go out and then you can press a key, which makes that go down. The locking bar comes in so that none of the other keys can be pressed whilst that one is down. And then the um, cam, this would spin round, which actually over here um, like you can't really see, we haven't worked out what it does yet we haven't dismantled all this but yet but that runs there's a bunch of cams and they go each of these five um, levers because this is running on uh, Bordeaux which is a 5-bit code it's kind of like ASCII ASCII is 8-bit so you've got any number between 0 and 255 to kind of encode your character in ASCII. In Bordeaux, you've only got five bits. Uh, so you only get kind of, you don't get upper and lower case, you just get upper case. Uh, and you've got figs, which will s switch you into a different mode. So that's like a special character that goes, oh, now we're not going to print any letters. We're going to print numbers or, you know, the at sign or the who are you we can do. Uh, which is that's a really cool thing. So if you're connected to a teleprinter somewhere else And maybe you want to make sure you're connected to the right teleprinter 
So you can press the Huayu key, which transmits the code to the other teleprinter. And when it's received, this drum here is what does the um, responding. This is the auto answer drum, uh, which if I kind of move this lever across a bit, um, and as I spin it around, you'll see that it rotates. Um, so I didn't have it at the starting point, but you'll see these different um, kind of gaps and bars and they will line up with these six bars across here which is also what the letters would kind of line up with and this is the five dot uh, five bit Bordeaux code for an, a number of letters to let it respond with its um, its call sign now Paul has spent some time trying to decode what these patterns are and he thinks that um, actually yeah, if we get his his little kind of you know post-it note working it all out of where there are um, marks and spaces and he thinks it's just puts it into letters mode does a carriage return light feed <laughs> and then puts it back into letters mode <clears throat> so so we don't think it's got a call sign set so you know possibly because it was a top secret call sign they've replaced the answer back drum at the end with just a standard one that you know isn't going to respond with anything but now I'm trying to work out exactly how, um, yeah, how we're going to get into this to kind of clean up all of these uh, these bars and stuff and get everything back up and running nicely. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll uh, check back in uh, later. So Paul has been having a clean of the uh, kind of receiver unit and things, and so we now have like. Um, this awesome red button <laughs> that's like super it doesn't seem super obvious on this on video maybe but like yeah like you clean that up and i'm saying that this is there's a red button a big red button we can press uh and we've also been working out that like how we can we're trying to get the ribbon off um you know the nice danger switch off power ribbon which we uh, we haven't applied power yet so that's all good but we've worked out there's this little lever here which lets us slide the um, kind of the carriage. Is that the term for that? Yeah, let's call it the carriage out. Um, and then actually, maybe Paul can show that it kind of lifts up nicely. And that just takes the, uh, the carriage off. And there are these cool cork rollers, but there is also Ding ding! <laughs> so, quick update. Uh, much cleaning has been going on. <clears throat> Paul's been making this look loads nicer. We've got the ribbons out. Um, and for the ribbon, there's only one. Um, yeah, and it's just generally looking a lot, a lot, a lot nicer all over the place. Um, <clears throat> And I have been, I've removed these two bars that would hold all of the keys in. Which then means that we can actually remove uh, the keys. So this is the carriage return. Um, so we can see there's a little spring at the bottom, which is what should make it go back up. It doesn't seem very strong, the spring. So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll see if we maybe need to do something about that. Uh, but I think the next step is going to be to remove all of these keys so we can give them a soak. Uh, there has been a revelation in the cleaning side of things. I've just been and bought some toothbrushes. I totally should have thought about these earlier. Uh, but they're going to let us get in and kind of scrub things where we need to. Uh, and so the next step is going to be to uh, yeah, remove all these keys. But before I do that, I want to get a nice good shot of where they all go <laughs> so that when it comes to reassembling you don't get a video of me later going oh my god we can't remember how the keys go so yeah right so progress um as you can see it's still in an assortment of bits we've got the carriage at the back we've got a much cleaner uh ribbon removed and everything given a good kind of scrubbing down um uh, kind of receiver unit and main motor 
and a kind of semi dismantled still transmitter, well, semi dismantled, like very dismantled, uh, with all the keys missing, apart from the um, this awesome who are you key, uh, because that's kind of fastened to a whole bunch of things and we decided that it was best not to dismantle it because then we'd have to try and reassemble it. Um, so if I just quickly kind of take you over here, you can see a whole <clears throat> raft of keys all uh, just kind of drying after having been soaked um, in some degreaser and given a good scrubbing with the toothbrush. So yeah, keys all kind of looking loads better. And uh, we are mostly calling it a night. Um, and yeah, let the keys dry. Then we'll kind of, you know, next step will be to reassemble everything, kind of check the wiring over. There's a load of, actually you're not gonna be able to see it, but there's a load of wiring underneath there. Um, there's a wiring diagram, which is good. Actually, there's a nice shot of the ribbon. We're gonna to have to find a new ribbon from somewhere. Uh, Cause I don't think that one's gonna work quite so well. Um, and then the other thing we need to work out is how we power this. <laughs> Because <laughs> we don't have, uh, you know, 100 to 250 volt DC supply knocking around. So, uh, yeah, we're going to do a bit of research about that. Paul's found uh, kind of an interesting um, document on online. So hopefully that will give us some clues on how we're going to be able to do that sort of thing. But one last thing we've just done as a quite a check is to look at the governor. So this... This was like, a, there's a cover, it sits over that. And like, this is just an insane way of powering the motor. And like, basically, power comes through it and there's these kind of contacts that can come away. If I can get it to move. Ah. Yeah, you see that, that kind of contact breaks and makes there, which reminds me of setting the points on like a really old, non uh fuel inject non electronic ignition um car because but what this does is that this spins round and like and this spring tries to hold that shut and after a certain amount of time it'll open because it, it'll go too fast and that will then kind of change the wiring which will make the motor slow down <laughs> so this is the governor it's like it seems just crazy that it's controlled by, you've got a spring <laughs> that just, you know, forces itself apart with centrifugal force and turns the motor off. <laughs> or, well, it doesn't, it actually switches in a, um, a resistor. But yeah, like, it's just a crazy bit of doing things. So, um, so yeah, that's where we've got to. <clears throat> um, and uh, we'll do some more filming when we're next back playing with it. Cheers.